everybody, it's Cheyenne and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about SDF or silver dimine fluoride. It's something that I just learned about a couple years ago and actually quite frankly have been using in my office more often and I believe it was just the FDA just regulated it to be used in the United States in 2014 so it's fairly new and a lot of people don't know about it. I knew nothing about it until like I said a couple years ago I had no clue it even existed and I guess you can actually buy it in stores. I found it online, but I personally think you should go to your dental office if you're interested in using it. And later on in this video, I'm gonna be demonstrating how you can put it on, or how your dental assistant or dentist will be putting it on your tooth. Um, I've personally never had it done, but as a dental assistant, I've done it many, many of times. And what's in it is, it's short is SDF, silver dimine fluoride. So there's silver, fluoride, water, and ammonia in it. The silver helps kill the bacteria. I believe the ammonia is used to keep it concentrated. And then the water just waters it down. And the fluoride helps build up you know, the enamel on your tooth. It's a mineral that's used for that. That's why dental offices you know, are for fluoride. And I know other people have their opinions on fluoride and that's perfectly fine. Um, I personally would not use SDF, of course, if you have a silver allergy. Now make sure you have a silver allergy and not a nickel allergy. A lot of people confuse that. Um, silver and nickel are different. So if you have a silver allergy, I would not recommend using SDF. But SDF is something in my office that we use on a tooth that doesn't have any cavity that has penetrated the dentin. So it's a cavity that has started on a tooth that's a smaller, that has not gone to the dentin of the tooth because of course the outer shell of a tooth is enamel, the strong part of the tooth, and then it goes dentin and then pulp. So once it gets into the dentin, it needs to have a filling done. Now SDF is most commonly used in my office on children because if a child that's like five comes in, you know, with a small cavity, sometimes it's easier to put SDF on that tooth to help the cavity from, you know, to stop it from getting larger instead of putting the child through, you know, a shot and a filling and all that stuff. So we usually recommend it for children. Now I have placed it on adults before too. It's really good to use, you know, around crowns if there's a small decay that's starting. And basically SDF does not heal a cavity. It just stops it from getting larger. So it makes that the part of the tooth that has gotten soft, that has decayed, it makes it harder and it makes the cavity or stops it from getting larger. It does not heal the tooth. You can also use fluoride if the filling is small enough to help you know, with that, but this is actually a formula that stops it from getting larger. So it stops you from potentially having to get a filling in the future or you know, work done on this tooth. Now there's many ways that you can do SDF. Um, you can put it on the tooth and then in the future get the filling done because SDF, even though I think it, it is great, it works really, really well, it does stain your tooth. So some children, you know, we put on their back teeth. We have put it on interior teeth if it's okay with the, you know, the patient's parents, but it does stain it. It turns it a dark color. And we can do that, you know, when a child's like five, if you want us to, to hold off on the filling for a little bit longer. And then they can come in in a year or so and get that filling and get that darkness taken out and replaced with a filling. Or you can just do SDF treatments. Um, some parents are okay with the darkening on the tooth. So we just do the SDF treatments so the child does not have to get fillings done. So this works really, really well on baby teeth. Um, on your adult teeth, I personally wouldn't want um, SDF placed on my teeth because I don't, I don't really want any dark spots but I do think that it's great for baby teeth. And I think it's great for, you know, people that have dental anxiety or maybe older patients um, that just have some decay around their crowns and they wanna stop that. But my age, you know, my mouth, I personally, if I had a cavity, I would just get a filling done. I wouldn't want um, SDF or a darkening of my tooth. But anyways, so with that being said, we place SDF on small cavities. Like I said earlier in the video, we don't place it on cavities that have reached like the pulp or the dentin. Those teeth need to have fillings done. These are for small cavities. As an assistant placing SDF, you do have to be careful with it because if you get it on, you know, the, 
on anyone's skin or their tongue or their cheek tissue it's gonna it's gonna dye it a dark color it does go away within a few days so i've always tell the patient that you know if you notice any dark spots like on your your lip or your gum or your tongue that means that i probably got some sdf on it and it's gonna stain it you also want to make sure you tell the patient or the patient's parent that it's going to turn the decay a dark color so they're aware of that um you don't ever want to put sdf on a tooth with the parent thinking that the cavity is just going to stop and then nothing else is going to happen and it also takes multiple applications so you have to do it at least three times your first application so you do it about six weeks apart um so you do your first application and then in my office you come back two weeks later do your second and then six weeks later do your third um and it's going to turn it darker so just make sure they're aware of aware of all of that and also it has fluoride in it, it has silver in it so make sure they don't have any allergies to that kind of stuff and then i did do a little video here just demonstrating how you put sdf on a tooth every office is a little bit different i've worked in offices where some dentists prefer using a curing light they think that it sticks better to the tooth that way the office that i'm in now we don't use a curing light for sdf but yeah, this is just a little video demonstrating of how you put it on a tooth. All right, these are my fancy little tooth models again. And you see the darkness in the middle of the tooth on the occlusal surface? That's actually what the tooth would look like after a couple applications of SDF. And that would mean that the SDF's working. So this is the SDF that we use in my office. It's like a little squeezable container, almost like an eye drop container. And you wanna squeeze that into a Dappen dish and you can see the darkness on the bottle because this stuff stains everything. It will stain your countertops. It will stain whatever you put, put it on. So be very careful with it. So you want to make sure the tooth is very dry. All the saliva is off the tooth. You want the tooth isolated. So you want to use your air and just dry off your tooth. And then you want to get a micro brush and put that into your SDF. I always dab off the or take dab off the excess so I don't get it on their tissue or anything like that. And this person we're just pretending has occlusal decay, so I'm just putting it in the middle. Now you want this SDF to sit on the tooth for about 20 seconds. In my office, we actually used to rinse it off, but now we just let it sit for 20 seconds and let it dry. Some offices use a curing light. You know, there are different kinds of SDF and different things that you need to do with it, but this is just the type of SDF that we use in my office. So I'm going to dry for a little bit. And then once it's dried, you're going to be putting some fluoride on it. So you just want to grab some fluoride varnish and you want to dab it just on the teeth that you put the SDF on. You don't want to then put, you know, use this brush to put fluoride on all the other teeth because this brush is now contaminated with SDF and you don't want to get it on all the rest of the teeth because you know, it could stain it or stain the tissue. So you want to be careful with it. So you just dab it on and that's it. You're done. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much it about SDF. It's very easy to put on. It just is extremely, extremely messy. Um, like I said, it will stain everything. It will stain countertops. It will stain your light handles. It will stain your skin. When I actually... <laughs> Actually, the first time that I put it on a patient, I didn't really know what it was. And the dental assistant just showed me real quick. And I put it on and then I had to clean up the room. And we actually used this Dappen dish that was glass. It wasn't disposable. So I wiped out the Dappen dish, wiped off the SD bottle, like with a cavi wipe. And then I used the same cavi wipe to wipe the counter and wipe some other areas of the room. And as the room was drying, these like brown streaks were on everything. And I was like, holy crap <laughs> i had put sdf everywhere it was very messy but now years later i've learned a few tricks to get sdf off of things if you do get it on there because believe me it's messy it will get on your light handles and everything else um magic erasers work great to remove sdf off of stuff also profi paste if you get profi paste and just rub it on there it will clean it off um, hand sanitizer, certain ones work really well, but a magic eraser and profi paste work the best if you get it stuck on something and need to get it off quickly. But yeah, <laughs> I think SDF is great, especially for baby teeth. I personally think it's safe and it's actually really, really easy to apply onto teeth. It's just very, very messy. So 
keep that in mind. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.